He said, I've been where you've been before, down every hallway, a slamming door, no way out, no one to come and save me, wasting a life that the good Lord gave me. Then somebody said what I'm saying to you, opened my eyes and told me the truth. They said, just a little faith, and it'll all get better. So I followed that preacher man down to the river, and, and now I'm changed, and I'm stronger. There must have been something in the water. Oh, there must have been something in the water. Well, I heard what he said, and I went on my way. Didn't think about it for a couple of days. Then it hit me like a lightning one late one night. I was all out of hope and uh, all out of fight. Couldn't fight back the tears, so I fell on my knees, saying, God, if you're there, come and rescue me, please. Felt love pouring down from above. Got washed in the water and washed in the blood. And now I'm changed. There must have been, and I'm stronger. There must have been something in the water. There must have been something in the water. And now I'm singing along to her. Amazing grace, and can't nobody wipe the smile off of my face. Got joy in my heart, angels on my side. Thanking God Almighty, I saw the light. Gonna look ahead, there's no turning back. We'll live every day, give it all that I have. Trust in someone bigger than me. Ever since that day that I believed. I'm changed, and now I'm stronger. There must have been something in the water. Oh, there must have been something in the water. Oh, there must have been something in the water. Oh, yes, I'm changed. And stronger Once was blind And now I see Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe I will be your narrator, Shadow Briscoe And we are going to get through this Bible in one year Today is day 40 We're going to be doing Leviticus 6-7 through 7 And Matthew 25-1-30 through 30. So, here we go. Leviticus 6. The Lord said to Moses, If anyone sin, sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving a neighbor about something entrusted to them or left in their care or about something stolen or if they cheat their neighbor or if they find lost property and lie about it or if they swear falsely about any such sin that people may commit. When they sin in any of these ways and realize their guilt, they must return what they have stolen or taken by extortion, or what they, was entrusted to them, or the lost pro property they found, or whatever it was that they swore falsely about. They must make restitution in full and a fifth of the value to it and give it all to the owner on the day they present their guilt offering and it as a penalty they must bring to the priest that is to the Lord their guilt offering a ram from the flock one without defect and of proper value in this way the priest will make atonement for the for them before the Lord and they will be forgiven for any of the things they did, did that made them guilty. The burnt offering, 8. The Lord said to Moses, 6, 8 that is, 
The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offerings. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar hearth until throughout the night, till morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his loincloth, loincloths, and linen undergarments next to his body, and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar, and place them beside the altar. Then he is to take off these clothes and put on others, and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. The grain offering. These are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons are to bring it before the Lord in front of the altar. The priest is to take a handful of the finest flour and some olive oil, together with all the incense on the grain offering, and burn the memorial portion on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Aaron and his sons shall eat the rest of it, but it is to be eaten without yeast at, in the sanctuary area. They are not to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. It must not be baked with yeast, and I have given it as their share of the food offering presented to me. Like the sin offering and the guilt offering, it must be holy and made decent. Dec any male descendant of Aaron may eat it for all the ages to come. And it is his perpetual share of the food offering presented to the Lord. Whatever touches them will become holy. The Lord also said to Moses, This is the offering Aaron and his sons are bringing to the Lord on the day he is anointed, a tenth of an ephel. Epha, on the finest flour, as a regular grain offering, half of it in the morning and half in the evening. It must be prepared with oil on a griddle. Bring it mixed well and present the grain offering, broken in pieces as an aroma pleasing the Lord. The son who is, who is to succeed him as anointed priest shall prepare it. It is the Lord's perpetual share, and it is to be burned completely. Every grain offering of the priest shall be burned completely. It must not be eaten. The sin offering. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, These are the regulations of the sin offering. The sin offering is to be slaughtered before the Lord in the place of burnt offerings. It is slaughtered. It is most holy. The priest who offers it shall eat it. It is to be eaten in the sanctuary area, in the courtyard of the, test, of the tent of meeting. Whatever touches any of the flesh will become holy. And if any of the blood is splattered on a garment, you must wash it in the sanctuary area. The, the clay pot the meat is cooked in must be broken, but if it is cooked in a bronze pot, the pot is to be scoured and rinsed with water. Any male in the priest's family may eat it. It is mostly holy. It is most holy. But any sin offering whose blood is brought into the tent of meeting to be to make atonement in the holy place must not be eaten. It must be burned up. The guilt offering. Leviticus 7. These are the regulations for the guilt offering, which is mostly holy. Which is most holy. Boy, that mostly word is getting my way. Which is most holy. 
the guilt offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and its blood is to be splashed against the sides of the altar. It, its fat, all its fat shall be offered, the fat tail and the fat that covers the internal organs, both kidneys and the fat of on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering. And presented to the Lord, it is a guilt offering. Any male in a priest's family may eat it, but it must be eaten in the sanctuary area. It is most holy. The same law applies for both the sin offering and the guilt offering. They belong to the priest who makes atonement with them. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep his, its hide for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven or cooked in a pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who offers it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with olive oil or dry, belongs equally to all the sons of Aaron. The Fellowship Offering 711. These are the regulations for the Fellowship Offering anyone may present to the Lord. If they offer it as an expression of thankfulness, then along with this thank, thank offering, they are to offer thick loaves made without yeast and without olive oil mixed in, then thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with oil, and thick loaves of the finest flour well kneaded and with oil mixed in. Along with their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. They are to bring one of each kind as an offering and contribute it to the Lord. It is Contribute it to the Lord. It belongs to the priests who splashes the blood of the fellowship offering against the altar. The meat of the of their fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on that day. It is offered. They must leave none none of it till morning. However, the offering is the result of a vow or a farewell. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> find where the meat came in because it wasn't there. Presented as an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. So they are to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who splashes the blood of the following offer against the altar. The meat of their fellowship offering of, of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered, they must leave none of it until morning. If, however, their offering is the result of a vow or is a farewell, free will offering, the sacrifice shall be eaten on the day that they offered it, but anything left over may be eaten on the next day. Any meat of the sacrifice left over till the third day must be burnt up. If any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day, the one who offered it will not be accepted, and it will be it will not be reckoned to their credit, for it has become impure. The person who eats any of it will be held responsible. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean must not be eaten. It must be burned up. As for other meat, anyone ceremonially clean may eat it. But if anyone who is unclean eats any meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, they must be cut off from their people. Anyone who touches something unclean, whether human uncleanliness or of unclean animal or any unclean creature that moves along the ground, 
and then eats any of the meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord must be cut off from their people. Eating fat and blood is forbidden. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Do not eat any of the fat of cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals may be used for any other purpose, but you must not eat it. Anyone who eats the fat of an animal from which a food offering may be presented to the Lord must be cut off from their people. And wherever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who eats blood must be cut off from their people. The priests share. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Anyone who brings a fellowship offering to the Lord is to bring part of it as their sacrifice to the Lord. With their own hands, they are to present the food offering to the Lord. They are to be to bring the fat to, together with the breast the, and wave the breast before the Lord as a wave offering. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast to, belongs to Aaron and his sons. You are to give the right thigh of your fellowship offering to the priests as a contribution. The sons of Aaron who offers the blood and the fat of the fellowship offering shall have the right thigh as his share from the fellowship offering of the Israelites. I have taken the breast that is waved and the thigh that is presented and have given them to Aaron and the priests and his sons as their per perpetual share from the Israelites. This is the portion of the food offering presented to the Lord that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded, commanded that the Israelites give this to them as their perpetual share for the generations to, to come. These then are the regulatory regulations for the burnt offerings, when the grain offerings, the sin offerings, the guilt offerings, the ordination offering, and the fellowship offering, which the Lord gave Moses at Mount Sinai in the desert of Sion in Sinai on the day he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord. Now, Matthew 25, 1 through 30, the parable of the ten virgins. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil and in a jar along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. The Parable of the Bags of Gold Again, it will be like a man going on a journey, who calls his servant and entrusts his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. 
The man, who had received five bags of gold, went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had, then the man who had received one bag of gold came Master, he said, I know that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, and gathering what, whether you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid, and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him, and give it to the one who has ten bags, for whoever will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. That was Matthew 25 through 31. That brings us to the end of the Bible with Briscoe for today and tomorrow we will be covering Leviticus 8 through 10. Matthew twenty five thirty one through 46. Father, I just pray that this was a blessing to you and to all. So all pray that I was a blessing to everyone who listened. And so that all of you come back tomorrow and we continue with the Bible with Briscoe. And in the meanwhile, have a blessed day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And they all said, Amen.